Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are going to be solving s linear systems algebraically. All right, we'll be solving linear systems algebraically today in our lesson. First of all, let's talk about what is the system of linear equations. We've seen this before in previous lessons. The system of linear equations, in our case, we're going to be graphing two lines, two straight lines, and the solution is the point where the lines cross. So the lines cross at one point, x, y, where the ordered pair is on both lines. In other words, that point, x, y, is the same for both equations, usually, if they're crossing at one place. Let me show you um, some solution types. Again, this is something from a previous lesson, so we'll just briefly go over it. When two lines um, are in existence, they can do one of three things. They can cross at one point. They can never cross if they are parallel lines. Or they can cross at every single point if they are exactly the same line right on top of each other. So we've seen that when we're graphing equations, when we're graphing solutions for systems. Now what we're going to do is we're going to solve systems algebraically just knowing that we are doing the same thing only we're using math and numbers and equations and all of that so let's go ahead and take a look this is one way to solve a system of of equations there are several different ways I'm going to show you one way that's nice and and pretty straightforward so remember we are looking for one point the point x, y that both of these equations share. So all we need to do is set x equal to x or y equal to y on these equations. Okay? If we set our x value equal to x or our y value equal to y, we'll be able to get the other value. I'll show you how that works. I'm going to set these equations as y is equal to y. I'm trying to find where they cross. So notice on my left equation 3x minus 5 is equal to y. On my right, on my equation on the right, whoops, x plus 1 is equal to y. So when I set these two equations equal to each other, look what I did. I got rid of the variable of y and now I can solve for my other variable of x. I'm going to have to um, Subtract x from both sides of the equation and add 5 to both sides of the equation. In other words, get my x's over to the left and my numbers over to the right. I join together like terms. 3x minus x is 2x. 1 plus 5 is 6. Now I divide both sides by 2 for my final solution of x is equal to 3. Now if that um, is a confusing thing to you getting from... Um, you know, joining the x values on the left and the y values on the right. There is another um, lesson. There are several other lessons on solving equations. And so if you're familiar with this, good. If you're not, then you want to check out um, a video on how to solve equations that have x values on both sides. And it'll explain fully step by step how to do that. But this lesson is about solving our system. So let's move along. We know that x is equal to 3. So I can take that value of x equals 3 and I can plug it into the equation over here. 3 times 3 is 9, 9 minus 5 equals 4, and I get my y value. Now the point here is that that point 3, 4 should be the same on both lines. So let's check it out. If I plug 3 in my equation over here, notice I get the same y value. So what that tells me is my solution or the point where these two lines are crossing is the point x equals 3, y equals 4. So the solution is 3, 4. Let's look at another one. The uh, Equations are a little bit more complicated, but I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to set my y value equal to my y value. In other words, 4x plus 7 equals 2x plus 3. I'll get my x values to the left, my, my numbers to the right. Notice uh, 4x minus 2x leaves us with 2x. 3 minus 7 is negative 4. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 2, telling me that my x value is negative 2. I'm going to write that up top and clear the board so I have a little bit of space to work with. And I'm going to plug in the value of negative 2 in for x, 
and see if I get the same answer on both sides. Plug in negative 2 for x, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1, look at that. So again, I have a solution where x equals negative 2 and y equals negative 1. So that's the way that we can solve equations algebraically. That's a big word for saying we're solving them. Instead of looking at a graph, we're solving them using math, where we actually set the equations equal to each other, solve for one of our variables, and then plug that variable into the equation. That's one way, one method of solving equations. There are several other methods, but this is one method um, for solving equations. Now I want to look at some um, more simple examples here. Here's an example where y equals 3x minus 2 and y equals 3x plus 2. Hmm y equals 3x minus 2, y equals 3x plus 2. Well, just looking at those equations, you should be able to recognize that they will never equal each other. They'll never equal each other because 3x minus 2 and 3x plus 2 can't give you the same answer. Okay. Now, we can still solve this putting y equals y. And what happens is we get 3x minus 2 equals 3x plus 2. We'll put the x's over to the left and the y's over to the right, and we end up with 0 equals 4. We know 0 is not equal to 4, so we can say there's no solution. But instead of actually solving this, you didn't really have to solve it. You could just look at those two equations and say, because you've got 3x consistent, no matter what number you plug in there, you're never going to be able to add 2 to something and subtract 2 from it and get the same number. It's not going to work, ever. So we know there's no solution here. The, and by the way, what that means is that these two lines are parallel to each other, just like we said earlier. So these two lines are parallel to each other, and they never intersect. So there's no solution. Just wanted to be clear on that. Um, one more simple example, um, y equals 0.5x minus 9.1 and y equals 0.5x minus 9.1. Looking at these, you should probably notice that they're exactly the same. If they're exactly the same, they're the same line. Now, you can solve this algebraically setting y equal to y, put both of them there, we'll join our x's on the left and our y's on the right, and you get when you cancel everything out, you've got 0 equals to 0, meaning it will, no matter what answer you put in there, it will be the same because they're this exact same line. Okay, And this may seem like it's pretty straightforward and why did I go through that trouble, but these are the same exact line. They line up on top of each other and they will always give the same solution. Now, the reason I'm going through this process is because the word problems require that you basically can sometimes look at them and look at these equations and make those conclusions. Whether it's um, like this one, they're the exact same, or like the previous one, oh, those are different. They'll never be the same. So here, let me show you an example of a word problem that'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. Kaz wants to sign up for a reading group. There was a cost for each book, X, and a cost for the meetings, Y. Two groups, uh, total costs are calculated using the equation. If Kaz has $5 per month to spend on the book club, which statement is true below? So here are the two equations. Club number one is 0.5X plus 1.5Y equals 5. And club number two is 0.5X plus 1.5Y equals 5. You've probably noticed that these equations are the same. So here are our options. He can, one, A, he can afford either class. The equations are exactly the same. Um, B, I misspelled the word he. He can afford only club one. It's obviously cheaper. Or C, he can afford only club two. It's a better deal. Or D, he cannot afford either class because the total is more than $5. But you can see clearly here that the total is exactly $5 for both clubs. Both clubs are the same cost, and so he could afford both of them. So recognizing that these are the same cost is part of looking at an equation and understanding um, 
what it means. So sam some sample word problems with linear equations might look like this. So I wanted to prepare you for seeing stuff like this in the future and being able to recognize whether they're exactly the same, whether they're different so that they will never have an intersection, or whether you need to solve them algebraically and find the point where they intersect. Here are, is our Common Core and PA eligible content. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.